Ray tracing is on and it is blinding the ever living f out of me right now. Nvidia today, it's not a green screen. Nvidia today announced three new GPUs. So they say that the 5060 Ti is 50 times better than the 1060. Asterisk when arbitrarily enabling or disabling settings based on how much it favors the new card. In size 7 font, in the bottom left of that image, in gray on black. The MSRP is set by NVIDIA at $300 for the RTX 5060 and $380 for the 5060 Ti 8GB with the 5060 Ti 16GB at $430. Why are we filming here? To prove that if it leaks, it wasn't my fault. There's only one person who can overhear any of this. Anyway, the price unfortunately means nothing to us right now because between the tariffs changing day by day and the MSRPs already being basically fake, I don't know how to judge the value. And most of the job of review is judging the value, so we'll figure out what to do, I guess, when the review comes around. Now, launch is tomorrow at the time of this video going up. And then additionally, the 5060 will be launching later. So the 5060 Ti is April 16th. The 5060 is a TBD date. We'd guess that'd be May to align with the rumored 9060 class and the GPU is coming out for that. The RTX 5060 is going to be 8 gigabytes of GDDR7. The 5060 Ti will come in 8 and 16 gigabyte variants. So that's the three GPUs they have. And uh, otherwise, the 5070, confusingly for some people, has 12 gigabytes of memory. So the 5070 5060 Ti has a variant that is a higher memory capacity than the 5070. This is based on the bus width choices and the memory controller choices that NVIDIA or AMD, when that happens to them, make. And uh, unfortunately, this is just another way that the 5070 looks worse than really just about any other 70 class card that has previously existed. NVIDIA has done this the last few generations, including the 4060 Ti 16GB with the 4070 at 12GB of memory, the 3060 with 12GB of memory against the 3060 Ti's 8GB of memory. Some of those have variants though, and this happens again because of the memory bus. But that doesn't make a 5060 Ti with more VRAM than a 5070 any less strange for most consumers, especially considering the 5070 is powerful enough for it to actually matter in some cases. Whether or not it'll matter for the 5060 Ti remains to be seen. So uh, we'll be able to talk about that in some of our testing coming up. But this one's going to be quick. Let's get into the specs and the details and I guess the pricing for the 5060 series of cards coming up. Before that, this video is brought to you by the Montec Hyperflow series of liquid coolers. The Montec Hyperflow aims to compete with other affordable liquid coolers by fighting on price to performance. In our testing, cooler performance was comparable to others in its class. The ARGB Hyperflow has an illuminated pump block with RGB LED fans that have quality rubber bumpers for vibration damping. The cooler has a six-year warranty and supports all modern Intel and AMD sockets, and you can learn more at the link in the description below. Now, a big topic today is going to be price, but again, that's kind of hard to nail down. It's a bit nebulous. So we'll start with something easier, which is the objective side, and that's the specs. Here's how it pans out. The 5060 Ti's CUDA core count is 4608, landing it at about 19% of the maximum config, or 21% of the 5090's configuration. The 4060 Ti has 4352 CUDA cores, or 23.6% of the maximum 8102 config for its generation, and 26.6% of the 4090. The 3060 Ti 8GB model had 4864 CUDA cores, but CUDA cores aren't everything and can't even be directly compared as you go down the generations far enough. Cards can go up and down and count, but from performance improvements over time, IPC improvements and everything else they're doing, like with frequency, the performance is not necessarily going to linearly scale with the CUDA core count. So even though it doesn't linearly scale, what happens is we get to see this sort of uh, percentage of the configuration shrinking with time relative to the class of card it is. So that's where we see the 70 class just becoming like a 50 class, basically. So what does that make the 60s and the 60 Ti's? I guess we'll find out pretty soon in our benchmarking. Other important specs include the 5060 Ti's 144 tensor cores. Per NVIDIA directly, it has a 14,001 megahertz memory clock and 448 gigabyte per second memory bandwidth. And that clock, uh, because it's GDDR, depending on how you want to calculate effective versus actual, that's where you see the disparity. The 5060 non-TI has 3840 CUDA cores and the same memory bandwidth as the 5060 Ti. Some early leaks have shown 8-pin power connectors on the cards rather than 12-volt high power. 12-volt high power would be under a lot less load on these, and so would have more safety overhead, but it's also completely unnecessary at this power level. TDP is 180 watts on the 5060 Ti class cards and then 145 watts on the 5060 class cards, with room, as usual, for partners to modify that if they want to go up in VBIOS. So the memory situation breaks down like this. The bus width is 128 bits. That's on the 5060 Ti's, both of them, and the 5060. Because of that choice, that's where NVIDIA can do either 8 gigabytes or 16 gigabytes. And then the 5070 has different bus 
uh, width, and that puts it at 12. They can't go to 16, it's not an option, just because of how it splits. And so that's where we get into what's confusing for some buyers, but ultimately what's gonna matter here is if the 5060 Ti is even powerful enough to utilize that 16 gigabytes versus the eight. And that's something we're only really gonna know from testing. So in some situations on the 5070, we saw it running out of VRAM, and what it'll do is you'll see these really bad stutters when that happens, or it can, depending on the game, uh, decrease the quality of things like textures and meshes. And so you'll see that start to appear in game testing where uh, just a frame rate benchmark won't necessarily capture it immediately. So we talked about that in the 5070 review. Now memory bandwidth is the other big consideration. We'll put some charts up on the screen from our 4060 Ti review where the 4060 Ti was sometimes worse than a 3060 Ti. And Nvidia's seen that regression in some of the recent generations and some scenarios depending on memory bandwidth. So we'll pay close attention to that in the reviews. As usual, Nvidia provided some first party benchmarks. We're not gonna spend a ton of time on this because the reviews will probably, you could surmise, go out with the launch of the card, which is tomorrow. But just to kind of figure out what NVIDIA expects. Let's get into those. First up, this image where NVIDIA claims a 50X performance increase for people on a 1060. That number is with the assumption that the 5060 Ti user is using DLSS, presumably the latest version. We're not sure the full extent of the testing and what performance level of DLSS or frame gen NVIDIA is using here, but none of it really matters. We'll look at the non-DLSS performance comparison in our review for a like-for-like -like baseline. Certainly, the uplift over a 1060 will be a lot, but 50X is extremely ambitious. NVIDIA also claims that the 5060 will be around 45 times the 1060. And just to reiterate, that is not going to be reality. So adjust expectations accordingly. NVIDIA also says that the 5060 Ti will be two times the frame rate of the 4060 Ti and have lower latency. Although in this example, that's extreme technicality with a one millisecond difference. This is with DLSS quality mode and frame generation at the maximum level of the GPU, which is just 2X on the 4060 Ti and 4X on the 5060 Ti. Once again, NVIDIA is drawing comparisons that'll set unrealistic expectations for anyone who glances at this marketing slide and doesn't notice the font size seven text at the bottom. Bottom. And again, our belief is that it is minimally, extremely misleading for NVIDIA to present this type of chart where the numbers that look the best for them but have the most caveats are gigantic and in the middle of the image. And the thing that actually tells you what's happening is very tiny and in the bottom if it's there at all. So in the very least, NVIDIA, what you could do is maybe just a, just a big MFG 4X and then a big whatever the other one is right next to them. That would really solve a lot of problems except for the one of trying to sell your product. It would not solve that problem it would amplify that problem. But I wouldn't be complaining anymore. This chart is more interesting. Delta Force is seemingly like for like without any frame generation. So that gives us a better idea as to what's going on. NVIDIA's 5060 Ti is shown as somewhere around 130 to 135 FPS average with the 4060 Ti around 110 FPS average. That'd be an uplift of about 20%. And remember that the 4060 Ti was sometimes worse than the 3060 Ti due to memory bandwidth changes. So NVIDIA will have to contend with that as well. We do want to give them credit for showing this chart this way though, because the latency and the FPS split is actually a pretty cool way to present this. Maybe we'll think about that. As for the 5060, the chart scale has changed from a tick every 20 FPS to a tick every 50 FPS, making it way harder to eyeball the positioning. Delta Force looks like it's somewhere around 160 FPS for the 5060 here with the settings that they used with the 4060 at around 140 FPS. That'd be around a 14 to 15% improvement. Nvidia also announced its 5060 laptops today. It says that these start at $1,100 and will launch in May. Pricing has the same caveats as before, but also the starting at hinges on what other components are in the laptops. Let's get to the more fluid topic and that's pricing. So the GPUs are supposed to be $300 for the 5060. <laughs> 50, 60. This, by the way, I already did the voiceover. If, if I have a card and if I were reviewing it, I may have already done the voiceover for the charts and the same thing was happening. The 50, 60 is supposed to be $300, 380 for the TI, uh, eight gigabyte, and then 430 for the 16. So uh, our first question to NVIDIA was whether or not this accounted for tariffs in some way. And NVIDIA did have an answer to that. Uh, I'll read that in a second, but also, Tariffs have been changing literally day to day. That's actually why we're here. We're talking to a bunch of hardware manufacturers about that, and uh, we'll have that story for you soon. It's really interesting. But uh, there were some exemptions given in the last week. That's crucial. Not all PC components have those. A lot of people think it's everything. It is not. There are things that have no exemptions whatsoever, uh, but our current understanding is that video cards do, especially NVIDIA's. 
Jensen Huang just had a million dollar dinner with the president and then the exemptions were announced. Uh, so additionally for this, NVIDIA did provide a limited statement. It said, quote, these prices are not inclusive of any regional taxes and don't include any VAT or tariffs, end quote. NVIDIA also informed us that it's been doing it this way for a while. So there's theoretically no change in how they're pricing the products for the MSRP on paper. That doesn't change things for how consumers will experience it. So uh, the fake MSRP thing that we've been talking about, I mean, that's partly partners, partly the manufacturers, the supplier of the silicon. And then, of course, there's also just the sort of larger macroeconomic conditions that uh, are harder to quantify for us, for a channel like us. Um, so we expect it's going to be a, uh, I believe the technical economic term for it is, um, what was it? I learned it the other day talking to an economist. Cluster f I think it's going to be a cluster f before all this, we had learned that the cost of RTX 5090s was actually way above MSRP recently. We just recently learned that one of the larger sources of 5090 buying was buying them for between $2,400 and $3,000 straight from the add-in board partners and in bulk. They were not available below MSRP. That means for the actual end user customer buying them from that company, they will not be available for MSRP. We're not sure what that'll mean for the 5060 series or how that'll change with recent news for the exemptions. But as for what it means for us, the challenge is going to be talking about value in the review. And so I'm not 100% sure right now what we're going to do for that. I think we're probably going to break out the price in a couple different groups and basically say if it's price X, then we think this. If it's price Y, we think this. And at the range A to B, it's worth it. At the range uh, B plus, it is not worth it or something. I don't know. We'll, we'll try and figure it out. We've never run into it being quite this bad before. So 2020, it was difficult uh, to evaluate the value because of the sort of supply and demand situation with the COVID boom and then with the pricing scalping and all that. But um, this, is, this is worse. So... Uh, we'll do our best to look at the performance, but honestly, I don't think you should really be buying any new video card right now unless you really need one. Like you actually are just at that point where you're ready to upgrade and you're okay with it being a little more expensive, then cool, go do it. Uh, but for anyone who is kind of that, ah, maybe I do, maybe I don't camp, or you're more focused on trying to get a good value out of it, we just think you should wait. Uh, or well, honestly, I don't even think it's it's a wait thing. I think it's I don't think it's going to get better anytime soon. So I don't know that it's a weight thing. I think the used market's looking really compelling right now. I don't know how long that's going to last, but we'll talk about that in the review. So I guess my guidance right now is uh, if you don't normally and you're open to it, look at the used market and maybe think about it. And then otherwise, we'll have a normal review for you. We'll do our best to account for the prices. Um, but we don't really have a ton of control here other than over how we might choose to make the value charge if we make them at all. So that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. As always, subscribe for more. Go to store.gamersaccess.net to grab a t-shirt like this one. It is the paper launch shirt. It is very fitting for this video. And check back to see the video that we're making for uh, the trip where I'm out here talking to different companies about the tariff situation. That's it. Subscribe for more. We'll see you all next time.